Yesterday we got the live stream with every one of the showcases for the new spears and they look great. Very interesting mechanics, very fun particle effects and people are very happy. So I want to do a little bit of a summary of each of the weapons in case you didn't see this. Subscribe to the channel for more of this, go to my coffee if you want to support me and let's get into it. So first I want to say that hey if you want to watch this guys just go watch the uh, actual uh, live stream it's free good uh, it's a long one yes it is but they explain it and they go for every one of the abilities uh, and show every one of the particle effects every one of the animations and they have a good amount of new ones right in, in the um in the ones that we got from uh from what's the word from Soto, uh, we didn't really get a lot of new things, I don't think. Yeah, there are new abilities, but they were reused from other types of abilities, and usually I don't really care that much, but maybe also a bit too much. For this ones, they're all like new, like most of them at least, uh, and it's very, very, very exciting. They look great, the particle effects look great, like the new uh, things for Ellie. Look at that, guys, that's yeah, absolutely beautiful. All, all right, so it's very, very cool. And every one of the spells, every one of the uh, weapons have this right i think probably the warrior and guardian are the ones that have the least cool abilities in terms of how they look but overall they're pretty nice now that being said there's also a few other things i want to talk about and i'm going to go through every one of them uh first of all let's do a little bit of a general uh, assessment of the weapons i think um they did pretty well at making every one of the uh weapons right uh, not only have a very unique um sword design in the way that they work uh, and they want then the way that they uh, are supposed to interact with each other uh, but it, well, also the fact that every one of the abilities and the overarching theme of each of the weapons kind of you know interact being between abilities for example you know the ones from ranger they you become you get in stealth with five and then you will essentially you will be having ambushes for each of your abilities and they interact with each other a little bit right you do different things and you are gonna be able to choose whenever you have your stealth uh, which one to use uh, not only in terms of damage but if you want to clean something up you know want to clean conditions you want to cc you want to um do an unblockable attack right it's yeah we're, we're gonna we're gonna go through everything but yes uh the other one as well necromancer you have you know you're building shards and you're spending them with your two that's pretty cool and then you have all the abilities here that do other stuff as well like you know reset your um ability to so you can do it more right your guardian uh you have your elimination that will be able to be used to do more damage or do different effects when your ability is illuminated and you also have the symbol that may all of your next attacks will be illuminated regardless of the way that you're playing right you have your thief spears that will not only have a specific kill you know lead attacks follow ups and finishers depending on you know on the two and three but also your four and five that will interact with each other in order to give you uh lead attacks or finisher skills right uh you also have the engineer ones that you know well i guess this one doesn't interact that much with each other at the end of the day you will just make them folk you will make your enemy focused and that's kind of about it uh so but it's still pretty pretty interesting right um so regardless, you you will be playing with uh, you know and deciding which which skills to use. Your revenant, of course, making you be able to be insanely you know like get a, a special effect on yourself by getting stacks, right? Um, this one also has I don't think the biggest amount of interactivity in between them, but the abilities are pretty cool and they you know they look very very fun. Uh, Mesmer, of course, with the um, with the fact that if you actually do damage, uh, your abilities a, a bit further away from your from the hitbox you will do more damage right that's pretty pretty cool and this will give you a, a moment of clarity a buff of clarity that will make it so you will have to decide on which uh special effect you're gonna get from each of the um if your abilities the warrior of course also doing the exact opposite uh, opposite as mesmer and instead giving you full uh you know a lot of more damage and a lot of more aoe if you're close to the boss instead of right uh, yeah, far away even though you are a ranged weapon that's actually pretty cool as well now that'll be fair this one doesn't really feel like it interacts with each other that much it's just like if you're close to the boss good if you're far away from the boss not good uh, at least mesmer has other uh, things interacting with each other with the clarity uh, other than the actual fact that you will be kind of far away from the hitbox but that's kind of it and of course elementalist with not only multiple attunements uh, but also uh, the fact that you have uh, special abilities and the etchings right that will the more uh, abilities used not only in your utility but also in your uh, weapon set will make your next uh, you know your etching fulfill and do way more damage right your brick circle so all of them honestly seem 
pretty pretty fun and interactive and now i'm gonna go through all of them uh see how they look a little bit and that way we can actually uh have a little bit of a you know what sword you know have a good uh, a review on everything that we have gotten so let's start with of course ranger uh i'm gonna have a little bit of footage as well actually no yeah ranger is the first one because this is the first one we did uh so ranger of course we have the out attacks that will do uh, damage depending on whether you are close or not or you're far away right um and this will, you know, de change the uh, animation of the attack. And you also have the stealth ability that, you know, will change the way that edge of the abilities work, right? Your two will just do swipe, but if you s you're, um, you do a little bit of damage, you give it a little bit of ability uh, with your two. And if you're stealth before that, you'll slash enemies in front of you, but then follow up with a powerful blow. So just kind of more damage, right? <laughs> uh, the three, um, you know, you will make them immobilized and you will do a heavy damage. And then if you're on st you know, if you're in stealth, you will reveal yourself and throw your spear instead, uh, and the spear will be unblockable, and also it will pierce and be a wider attack. The three one, you will leap to your target location, damaging enemies. Is that a little attack that we've seen before on range? Uh, there you go, that one, right? It's a pretty, pretty cool attack, right? Uh, it's pretty, pretty cool, I think, and uh, it's it's very range like, you know, ra ranger like, considering the fact that you you will use your pants, right? And if you, of course. Our stealth, you will instead leap to the target location, dazing enemies, which is also very interesting. And of course, the, fi the, f the number five that will make you go to stealth instead. Um, of course, if you use it after being stealth and you're number five, you'll throw out a net, damaging and immobilizing enemies on impact. Foes on the uh, in the net are crippled, and your pet becomes excited for the new. Uh, for the new hunt gaining super speed. It does seem like we have a lot of uh, immobilizing uh, situations in these weapons. Uh, most of the ability, most of the spears have some sort of immobilize in order to set up your combo that you obviously will have in each of these spears, which is interesting. Immobilizing is not the best thing to play against, though, I will say, uh, especially if you're playing PvP or Warper's World. So I hope that, uh, you know, maybe, maybe they don't go too hard on it, but um, we'll see how it ends up playing out in the end. Uh, but yeah, next one, of course, <coughs> is a Necromancer. Necromancer Spear, as we talked before, you create shards with your uh, abilities, right? With your out attacks and, of course, your f uh, 3, 4, and 5. And then you will blast them and do more damage with your perforate. Attacks foes in front of you with a series of strikes, consuming any active soul shards. Deal additional damage against foes below the health threshold threshold uh, you know that's yeah you'll consume all of your active shoulders soul shards and you'll do more damage number three is days your target and gain life force and soul shards if the target is using a skill and this is also a thing that we've seen a lot before in, in you're gonna see a, li a lot more afterwards there's a lot of interrupting abilities if you interrupt your enemy while doing uh, your ability you'll get some sort of benefit other you will or you will create more shards in this case for necro or in other ones you'll fulfill whatever mechanic your spear has to fulfill to get you more damage or more abilities. If you have a number of soul shards when you, you know, uh, above the threshold, when you activate the skill, your target is also immobilized. Very interesting. Throw a spear at your target. If it strikes a foe, it inflicts conditions and you may reactivate to teleport to that one. If you teleport to that one, you gain soul shards. Get additional soul shards if there are no enemies nearby. Actually, very interesting thing. So you can teleport around and checking on C who you are uh, gonna teleport to, uh, of course. And it, I guess it, I guess this is for like, if you mark the foe, um, yeah, if they're alone, yeah, you'll you will get more shards. For, a, for uh, what's the word? For bosses, uh, single target, single uh, target bosses, I guess, it will probably be very good. Uh, perform a wide swing that removes boons from foes and negates the next boons applied to them, gain soul shards and might for each target struck. This is an OE ability, and of course this also is an insane ability for PP and War of the World, I think. Like, this sounds insane in uh, Zergs, it sounds insane in Roaming, and it sounds insane in PP. Um, not getting boons is very annoying to play against, I think. Um, and I'm not really sure if this is the best thing ever, because like playing against this and you want to apply a boon, and knowing that you got extirpated uh, from your boons, it's... Uh, I feel like this is gonna get nerfed, guys. I think I think that's what's gonna happen. And you get three stacks as well, which is insane, right? So maybe maybe chill with that one, <laughs> okay? Uh, but very cool design, and I really like the fact, for example, that Adel, the more... Because um, like you would think, like, oh, as soon as I get all my soul shards, might as well spend them, but not so much, because Adel, if you actually use it, your number three, you will um, um, get more... Um, what's sort yeah, we'll get more short shards, but if you have a good amount of them already, you'll also mobilize the targets, which gives him another thing to think about, right? I think it's pretty cool. 
uh, Guardian. Uh, we have the Illumination uh, mechanic, where if you're next, uh, well, one use your two, your three, your four, the next ability you use will get illuminated, creating a new uh, effect, right? Uh, two, charge your forward with your spear, striking enemies and healing allies you pass through. Upon striking an enemy, your next spear attack is illuminated. Uh, allies you pass through are healed for more and gain bones, right? Now, um, yeah, that's the ex effect on illuminated. Um, Gleaming disc, spin around, striking enemies around you after a short delay, a shockwave of light burst through your position, damaging enemies and granting might to allies. Now, this is a very cool ability, I think. Uh, we have it right here. Why do I have sound on it? Look at that. This is that ability exactly there, as you can see there. It's, uh, you know, it's just... Oh, no, that's the four. I'm stupid. No, well, you know what? I spoiled you. Let's talk about the four, actually. Why not? Let's go, let's go and talk about that. You can see that attack? That's the four, okay? And that one, uh, you, you can see a lot of spears going down. Uh, and damaging the enemies. If you actually stack on one of those uh, little circles, you'll actually get eliminated yourself, which is super, super cool, I think. And you know what the best thing about this particular uh, ability and all the other abilities, if uh, any of these abilities, they can do damage, but also they can heal in some way, right? Um, for this one, you will create, you will remove conditions from allies. For this one, you will um, grant might to allies. And for this one, for number two, you will actually heal pal allies you pass through so you're essentially having a weapon that you you know your spear your, your attacks with spear that you know that you're gonna you're gonna be poking people with uh not will not only damage people but we also will heal them so in some ways you could get a healing build with this where you would essentially start stabbing your friends in order to get them boons and healing which is super super funny i think uh and i think it's super super cool uh we already have something very similar with uh, berserker i think um Heal Berserker, right? Which is super weird, right? In other mobs, you wouldn't have this, honestly. And in this case, you do. I think this is going to be one of those uh, things that I'm going to try out. Spear, Heal, uh, Guardian. And probably, hmm, I guess, Will Bender might be, would be kind of interesting to trust. Uh, Firebrand, of course. Um, just to see how it works, right? I think that would be very, very fun, right? And I really, really like that design here. And of course, the number five. They place the symbol of luminance on the ground. Knocking enemies back on the initial cast. While active, the symbol grants resistance to allies that don't have it already and inflict weakness on enemies. While starting within the symbol, your spear attacks are automatically illuminated and do not consume the illuminated effect when used. If you use this while being illuminated already, the symbol is active, all other spears are illuminated even if you move out of the range of the symbol, which is super, super cool, right? So if you prepare this and you were eliminated before using the symbol it doesn't matter if you're in the symbol you can just go around and you'll still be able to use your abilities eliminated i don't see any reason why you wouldn't go for this one specifically in pvp and oversoul environments maybe in pve environments you wouldn't do it because you want to you know, keep your eliminated um or other things but to be honest you're going to be eliminated after symbol of luminances anyways so might as well just go for it but i guess you know th this is the cool thing about this uh, weapons right it will change depending on the situation. Even if you will have an actual rotation you want to be following, um, it doesn't matter because you will, in some ways, uh, have to do other things depending on what the boss does, what the, your enemy does, and I think that's pretty cool. Now, next one, of course, we have Thief. Um, here we go. So we have the out attacks. Uh, they will just, you know, hey, you throw your spear from far away. That's that's crazy. That's that's good. And you've got, of course, you also have your stealth attack. Attacks foes in front of you with a series of strikes, making them vulnerable. The final strike inflicts fair damaging conditions. If this skill follows a finisher skill, it grants initiative. And this is where we go for the finisher skill. So, Mr. Thieves, they will um, have lead attacks, follow up attacks, and finisher attacks. Let me just go through here. And show it to you. So you can see that the enemy, the thing is on green, right? And then we'll go purple and then we'll go yellow. So it'll change from lead attack, from mid attack, and from finisher attack. And this only these two will change, right? So depending on what you want to do, you will be using this and, you know, um, choosing to do the two, choosing to do the three in the mid attack, and then choosing to, I don't know, go back to three or two, or depending on what the situation, on the finisher attack. All of the abilities will change, and you'll have to use them. Now, this is actually pretty cool, and then let's see with this, uh, which abilities they are. The lead attack on two will be cripple your foe with quick strike. Poison, then the follow-up will be the poison your foe with a sweeping strike. Moon impaired foes are immobilized, and the finisher strike enemies, um, nearby enemies inflict immobile conditions, Deal more damage and inflict additional conditions against control and immobilized foes for the finisher. Now, the 
Uh, yeah, that's that, that's number two. Now the three will do, you know, another attack that will actually you will start leaping. I think. Let me just see if I can check it Throw out it. here. No, that's the, the rab. <laughs> what the hell is it? I thought I muted every one of them. Well, I guess maybe I didn't. Let's just go here and. Yeah, that's the thief one. This is something else. Oh, there we go. There's the thief. So I just want to see the three, right? The three. I'm pretty sure that's the one where you leap around. Uh, let me just see it. There you go. You can see the the big leap on the three. Um, the first attack, then the follow-up, strike your foes and siphon health from them, siphon additional health from the vulnerable foes. And the finisher, strike foes in front of you and remove boons from them, then enter stealth, remove additional conditions from weakened foes. So either, each of them, uh, you know, you might use them for different situations, this one for like, um, you know, get some health back, this one's maybe for being a bit more aggressive. It really depends on the situation. And of course, the cool thing is that 4 and 5 will actually interact with each other for this one, right? Because they do not have finisher or uh, follow-up attacks or lead attacks, but they will instead do something else. You can see that the number 4 is throw a spear that inflicts conditions on your target. It distracts a movement, impaired foe. It also inflicts days. It this skills falls a finisher skill. So if you already did a finisher skill and then you do this, you will grant a bonus to outgoing damage on the... Um, Next attack, it'll and it'll count as a lead attack, so it'll instantly go to follow up instead of lead attack. So if you press, you finish your, you know, you do your finisher, you press, you do the striking throw, you inst you will skip the number one here, uh, this first attack, and then you'll go instantly into the follow up, which ultimately probably will do, do more damage, uh, of course. Um, and you'll also, you know, gain some bonus of gun damage for duration as well, which is pretty cool, right? So you probably want to do that. You probably would go to the finisher and then instantly into the strike and throw. Now you also have the Shadow Veil, which blocks the next incoming attack. If you block an attack, heal yourself. If this skill falls a finisher skill, it blocks additional effects. So it's just defensive, and if you already used it, uh, if you used it just after a finish att finish attack, it's even strong of a defensive. Uh, more stronger. Stronger? Stronger of a defensive. You guys will know what I mean. It's okay. <laughs> now for the next one is Engineer. Engineer with the, of course, mechanic of focusing enemies, right? You will get a focused effect, effect on them, and this will give you... Um, a bit more damage and of course also some other effects that we're gonna go through right now now the you can see here the uh the effect on the enemy it'll be like this little this little symbol on their head i don't know why it's not happening right now that's one of the abilities but i wanted to show it there you go you can see them uh, having this little focus uh marker there right this will make it so your abilities will do something else right now for number one for uh attack number one skill number one stab your foe the auto attack, right? Inflicting bleeding, then swing your foe, inflicting bleeding, and strike your foe, refreshing your focus and bleeding your target. Uh, and if you inflict more vulnerability in all of them, if you are, uh, if they are focused. Now for the two, leap towards your target, unleashing intense energy on the area. If you strike them, your primary target becomes the focus on your other skills. If a focused target dies, the skill is refreshed. So that's actually a pretty cool mechanic, I think. You know, you will, hey, you want to use this one exactly very soon to uh, target uh, the target dying. So when you do it, you can use it again on someone else, right? I think that's super, super, super cool, right? Now, the next one is Prime Your Lightning Road to deal damage to their allies. Focused enemies receive extra punishment, gain charges for your electric artillery skill. And the electric, electric artillery skill is, well, this is the one that we, we just saw with the things spinning around, right? Or your charge roads at a foe, immobilizing them. Uh, immobilizing them, uh, foes take increased d burning duration and vulnerability stacks based on your lighting rose charge, right? And I think that's pretty cool. Uh, four, charge the earth with electricity, dodging focused foes and stunning others. And five, traverse the area and unleash lighting around you, directly targeting focused uh, foes uh, a number of times. And then, of course, you can press it again to repeatedly strike your foe, inflicting conditions, right? So, this all, of course, um, makes it so, you know, whenever you actually use the abilities, you will focus them, and then you can use them again, uh, or, you know, pick the ones that you want in order to uh, make the enemy, uh, what sort? You'll get more damage going, more abilities going, and, of course, also make your lighting runs get more electri electric artillery things, so you get more things spinning around you, which, honestly, it's a very cool ability. Those little, this little, uh, the little rotating little rods. I think it's a pretty cool-looking ability, right? 
So there you go. Now for the next one, of course, is the Revenant. The Revenant is probably one of the most confusing ones, I think. Uh, you can see it right here. Uh, but it is actually very You can see that you get, you almost become like a... May, uh, maybe not a Spectre. Uh, but you do have like this Shroud kind of mechanic, right? You can see here how you, whenever you use your 5, you'll start becoming, uh, you know, redder and darker. Until you have 5 stacks and you become like completely... Uh, buffed up, right? Uh, and all the abilities that you use will essentially refresh your five so you can keep this um, buff at all times, right? Now, this makes it so it's kind of like very easy to understand how, what you want to do. Is you want to use uh, probably this on, on cooldown, right? Um, off cooldown, so you can just blast all the time and then these three only when, uh, <laughs> well, when these ones are not up, so you can just uh, get the cooldown of this ones as well, right? Now let's learn, let's read the abilities. Hurl, oh, I fucked up. Okay, no. There we go. Hurl your weapon at your foe. If you're close in, if you're in a close range, swing your weapon at them instead. Strength out foe reduces the cooldown of Abyssal Race once per skill. Abyssal Race being the five, right? Of course. Second, uh, hurl your spear towards your foe, inflicting area damage in conditions and stri and target struck. Striking at least one causes uh, additional Abyssal Race to receive a large recharge redu reduction as well same thing again you do damage you inf inflict it to more, more people here and you will make your abyssal race get less cooldown abyssal uh, blitz dash in the direction and slightly recharge abyssal race while leaving portals in your wake detonate when foes walk over them and of course also drops the mines as you dodge this is like the big uh, attack we saw in the trailer and um, let me see if i can find it where you can you know you there we go there's the little balls you can see them right there <laughs> The little balls that you will just dash through them, uh, you'll evade, and those little balls will appear there. Which I think is pretty, it's, it's a lot, right? You can see it's it's a lot in the in the screen, but they do look pretty cool, I think. And of course, of course, um, you will also make the Abyssal Race have a lower cooldown. Abyssal Blood, unleash a gravitational mists, force on your target area. Initially in damage, then pulling foes into the finale. Abyssal Race cooldown is reduced for each target you attempt to pull. So essentially, I don't think this is a, this is not a, a weapon of hey press this button. Like, the, the important part is not to think about which buttons to press. You probably will always be like yo, uh, I'm pressing five all the time. I get my five stacks. I'm pressing two, three, and four to make my next Abyssal Race uh, fa happening ha happen faster, right? The only thing that we will consider is hey, will I um, I will try and use my Abyssal Blood and Force close to a lot of people so I can get even further. Um, reduction of cooldown in my abyssal race right but that's kind of about it about us right next one of course is the mesmer which is one of the most interesting ones i think um because you have your clarity mechanic that will make you empower these abilities right and you can only get them uh you can get only the clarity effect by using mind the gap as you can see here swing your spear in a circle dealing gross damage to foes in other edges uh, in our eyes, gain clarity if you strike an enemy with the outer edge. So if you don't, um, and we'll see the ability right here. Uh, oh, there we go. Look at that. There it is. I <laughs> saw that right there. Look at the ability. It's very, very beautiful ability, I think. Um, and if you attack it with the outer edges, you will get the clarity effect and you will do more damage, right? Now, this is actually a very interesting mechanic, but it is kind of hard because of many bosses having a very weird hitbox. So I wonder how it's actually going to work in the end. Uh, I hope that it's very forgiving. Otherwise, it's going to be very annoying to use. Uh, and you can also this, use this ability while you're in, um, well, you have clarity, I guess, to create a clone if you hit an enemy, oh, sorry, um, if you're empowered, gain might, right? So if you have clarity, uh, you gain more might, right? Now for imaginary, imaginary inversion, evade while preparing a strong attack. If you access, successfully evade an attack before you strike, your attack will heal you. Remove conditions from yourself if you have clarity, right? The one you got from behind the gap. Phantasmal Lancer, dash at your foe, removing boons from them, leave a Phantasm at your initial location, but that will dash after a delay, dealing heavy damage and crippling targets. If your Phantasm strikes a crippled target, immobilize them instead. Another immobilize, as you can see there. If you have clarity, summon an additional Phantasm. There you go. You get another Phantasm. And for Mental Collapse number 5, teleport your target and release a Cascade of Physic Energy. Damaging Nerva enemies, refresh your, refresh, refresh your Mind Gap skill, stun foes struck if you have clarity. So, if you have clarity, you get stun foes, pretty nice and of course it also replenishes your mind the gap which is probably the biggest important part uh, of this um of this spear right and uh, now for the auto attacks it's just it's you gain might you gain might and you give quick uh, weakness and you more well, damage and of course you also have the uh, ambush attack which you 
you have your little spear and you do, you do a lot of attacks, right? Which is pretty cool, right? Uh, next is Warrior. Uh, Warrior is the one that we talked about before as well, but hey, you know, maybe it's not that, that interesting. As I said before, it's just you attack. And you, the fa the closer you are, the more power you have on your ability, and you will, you know, spread it into doing more damage. And of course, also uh, a bigger radius will appear, and you will uh, do a bigger, a bigger of an attack in terms of AOE. This sounds very fun for like surging orbs as well. I think uh, we'll see how it goes for sure. It is, I guess, as long as you don't, I guess, as long as you don't, as you can't uh, projectiles for, it. I mean, projectile destruction for it. I guess it'll work, uh, but we'll see, right? Uh, throw a spear at your enemy. That shatters on contact, scattering shards that damage enemies around the initial target. The number of additional targets struck by shards increases the closer the initial target is. There you go. Uh, of course, you also have the number two. Throw your spear at a target location, damaging and inflicting condition or opponent in the area and causing a shockwave after a short delay. The shockwave is bigger when the target point is closer, as we talked before. About before. Evade away from your target of foe, then swipe forward, sending a wave to, of air in front of you that knocks enemies back. Pretty cool. Four, throw a spear that pierces foes in a line, immobilizing them. Enemies using a skill when struck are additional dropped and dazed. There you go. Now, this is actually another interrupted skill, which is actually very interesting, I think. Uh, and then fa number five, mark a single target. After a short delay, bombard a target with spears that continue to track the target's location. The delay is shorter the closer the target is to you. Well, another ability considering the fact that, you know, you have to be closer to the... To the um, to the enemy, right? It seems it really seems like we have um, also, yeah. This ability seems like it reminds me of uh, Radan's ability from Elden Ring that it doesn't really look that way, I think. And I think that's a bit of the um, complaints and scene about Warrior in particular. I guess I didn't have Warrior, but people have not really liked the particle effects, the abilities uh, on Warrior, they seem a bit too not interesting. Just you throw the spear, and that's about it, considering that Paragon. We used to be pretty flashy as well with your you would like grow wings or whatever i really hope they put them back in um you know maybe when you because there's one one of the abilities like makes you like jump and like then attack i think that would be very very good if you can actually get that in the game um i know it's beta so we could actually get some of these things happening um and i really hope so because you know the other abilities uh, in other spheres really do look pretty nice and this is already not the most interesting um i don't think Spear overall, not that it's bad, but it's definitely not the most uh, insane uh, thing. Uh, so I hope that they uh, they do that too, right? I really do. Um, we'll see though, we'll see. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Oh, we also have the, of course, the bursts. The, bur the normal burst, you have a jump... Uh, up and throw a spear at your target location, dealing damage in an area. Damage dealt is increased with adrenal level, and you evade attacks while in the air. That is very cool, but <laughs> I wonder if that's going to be insane on Spellbreaker, because, like, I don't know if you guys know, but Spellbreaker, you will, um, you, you, you will reset your F1 by pressing F2, right? So, and getting attacked on your F2, and that F2 also makes you invulnerable. So, I'm guessing you will be able to press F2, uh, do F1, evade something, then you know, they try and attack you, you press F2, and then you evade again, and then they attack you, and you evade, <laughs> and you use your Haristos again, and then evade again, and then maybe you dodge, and then, <laughs> like, you can just continue to do this forever, uh, which sounds insanely toxic for any sort of PP, but we'll see, maybe it's not gonna be that bad, it just, it gets me a bit scary, okay, it gets me a bit scared, okay, because I play Spellbreaker, and I like doing that, but I'm pretty sure that people don't like that, that the fact that I do that to them, right? So we'll, we'll see. And you also have the power burst through several piercing spears that inflict vulnerability in quick succession, which is pretty, pretty cool. They just, they just throw a lot of spears, which is it's pretty nice, right? And the last one, Elementalist. This one is one of the best ones, I think. Uh, they have a lot of cool little interactions in between. Uh, and of course, there's a lot of abilities, so we're not going to read all of them. But in some ways, they're kind of very similar in each of the... Um, in each of the specs, uh, in each of the ele uh, attunements. So the number one typical thing, you throw the spear... Uh, you'll get some sort of effect, burn ability, healing, damage, bleeding, right? Whatever. Uh, the two, it will essentially put a... Well, we can read this one, right? Unleash a volley of blazing spears, you put burning on fire. On water, you chill enemies with a beam of ice. On air, you create a storm of lightning that inflicts damage over time to affected foes and burn ability. And number... Uh, and and uh, what a number. And earth, you uh, hurl a heavy... Earth and Spear that cripples your foe. For the number three uh, skill, you will gain boons on Sheath 
uh, you will evade attacks and remove conditions on on um, on water. The previous was uh, fire, by the way. Uh, <laughs> on air, you gain super speed, and your next spear spear skill always critical strikes, which is kind of interesting for PB, I think. Uh, and then on the number. Uh, on, on Earth, you will gain barrier, and your next spirit will daze. And that's actually very interesting. It seems like the number three is it's essentially utility most of the time, whether it is boons, conditions removed, or whatever. Uh, it seems then uh, the skill number three is always some sort of uh, uh, some sum of utility. And you can actually see this in the um, in the uh, what's the word in the weaver uh, abilities as well. As they will also, uh, because that's the number three, you will have dual attacks in between. For, if you guys know how Weaver works, you have you know fire attunement, uh, and then you go to air. Your mid skill, your number three, will become a fire and air skill, right? So, for example, the dual attack for frost, uh, for water and fire, you will get a fire aura and frost aura, and re and uh, oh no, we'll go through that for galvanize for um. Wait, actually, what is that? Galvanize water and. And air? No, air and earth. There we go. Air and earth. Uh, you gain might and super speed uh, for uh, fiery impact. I'm guessing that's earth, fire. Yes. Uh, you gain stability for illuriate, which is air and man. It would have been nice to have a little bit of a clearer way of looking at this, but you know what? This look. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, it's all you know. I'm just gonna read all of them. They're all. Uh, utility skills, which I think is very cool because Weaver uh, doesn't have that much on the ut actual utility, so having this one as a thing is very, very cool, right? So remove damaging conditions, soothing burst, you heal yourself, and sail storm, you grant a brief storm of whirling rocks that destroy incoming projectiles. So all of them, different things that you can consider in case of different situations, right? And the coolest thing is that all of them, when you press them, you will reduce the recharge of your primary attunement, making you be able to go back to your actual damaging abilities and your back to your rotation very, very fast. Before, you would have to wait a little bit. Uh, a little bit more, right? But now you don't have to do it because you will just recharge it very, very fast. So you can just go in, pick your actual attunement to get your specific utility you need in this case, and then just go back uh, to whatever you were doing before, which I think is super, super cool design, super, super cool, and fixing a problem that Weaver has had for a while. Now, let's go back to the main abilities. Spear 4, Conjure a Meteor. Uh, this is essentially always Conjure something, you know? For Fire, you Conjure a Meteor that will do a lot of damage. Uh, for um, for water, you will create a whirlpool that pulls enemies in. For twister, for air, right? You will create a twister, a target location making foes burnable. And foes in the center of the twister are lifted into the air. And for earth, create a fissure at the target location, crippling foes. Foes at the center of the fissure takes increased damage and are weakened. So all of them, you can do a big, you know, b you know, b ball or circle of things and they will explode and do something, right? <laughs> and for fives, these are the etchings. The etchings are these big, big circles we've seen in the streams, right? This ones that when you actually use abilities on inside of them, they will start getting upgraded and you will do a bigger effect at the end. You can actually see how the how it actually grows and grows and has a different effect. It's super, super cool. Look at that. Look at that, guys. When you have it to the fullest, you can see you can see that huge like lava coming out of uh, of the sides. Now, every one of these ones for, uh, for uh, fire, for water, for earth, for air, they all have some sort of other type of uh, effect. And we're going to read through them right now. For fire, well, I mean... Sadly, I don't really have the empowered version of it, but you, it, it just will do more of this, right? In this case, in Volcano, the fire one, um, creates a violence eruption using a number of other skills with this etching pound completes the spell. In looking its full potential, they all unlock the, unlock the full potential. This one gives might and, of course, does damage. For water, and inbox a glacial flood, it, it does healing, uh, right? Uh, this one uh, will give fury and do damage. The one on, uh, on Derecho, right? Uh, th yeah, they have very interesting names. Uh, we'll read through them, right? For, for air, right? And for um, water, and the one with the best name, Etching Haboob, <laughs> which is uh, the earth one. It's actually... Um, what is the word? It is actually a type of tornado, so don't have your uh, mind in the gutter, guys. A haboob is a bit of a uh, dust tornado, as you can see here, nothing else, so don't don't, don't even. And of course, it gives stability to people, and I'm guessing it does a lot of damage as well, right? Uh, but yeah, the names are actually very interesting. Uh, you know, etching volcano, etching 
Jokul Hop, which I'm guessing is some sort of Icelandic uh, word for something, and uh, Derecho, which honestly, Derecho means right in uh, in Spanish. I'm not sure why that would be, but maybe there's some sort of like, uh, I don't know, some sort of like air phenomenon that uh, it's also called Derecho. I actually have no idea, but you might, you can leave it in the comments if you know. Uh, but yeah, it's very, very cool. So there you go. That's kind of about it. I really think this is the one that a lot of people really liked, especially specifically because a lot of people missed this kind of gameplay from actual um, Elementalist. We, they wanted Spear, sorry, Staff to be like this, and we finally got it because Staff never got actually... Um, reworked and now we have this which i think is cool honestly i don't really mind it i think um i like that i like that i think um now some people say oh they should have just reworked staff but i think this is a bit of a different type of of uh idea spears in some ways are kind of a staff i guess uh, and also the fact that staffs uh specifically in Gears 2 they are way slower everything here is instant i think they should rework staff in some way but they should just make the uh make it the slower version the you know, you stand there and cast a version of the spear. Make it more epic, of course, but I think it's fine to have something like this as well, right? There you go. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me if you, uh, if I missed anything. Of course, it's a preview. Uh, we'll definitely see more about this next week. And I'm going to make another video on why I think these spears actually are the best design weapons in the game and what the conclusions of that are going to be. So subscribe to the channel for more of this. Go to my coffee if you want to support me. See you guys around. Love you all. Bye-bye.